I don't know about you guys, but Christopher Nolan is easily one of my favorite directors of all time, if not my favorite. So let's do a tier list for all of his films. So this will include from what it was following all the way to the newly released Oppenheimer. So I am sorry, guys, about the lack of content. This should be getting done soon. Um, as soon as I managed to get on my roast review for Rebel Moon Part 2, spoiler alert, was not a fan. But anyway, get out some other content. Versus episode on Die Hard 2, Die Harder versus uh, Live Free or Die Hard. But I'd say we just jump into this thing. And first up, we have Batman Begins. So for Batman Begins, Batman Begins did the We Are in Eternal Debt after it sent the message that Batman was supposed to be taken seriously, especially after the uh, bat nipple thing in uh, the late 90s. Wow. Yeah, that was an experience that happened. Thanks, Batman and Robin. But thank you to Christopher Nolan for giving us a gritty Batman. So I love Batman Begins. I'm going pretty high. I think I will go... Uh, well, the tiers we have are Masterpiece, Amazing, Great, Good, Okay, and Meh. Because I don't think there's an outright bad film that he's ever done. There's one I'm very mixed on, but... I wouldn't say it's terrible. It's certainly, well, it's certainly if that's your worst film, as com compared to a lot of others, it's a pretty dang good thing that you that's your worst one. But Batman Begins, we'll go. Oh, man, I want to. That's. I will go I'll go top of. It'll probably stay at the top of this tier, but I'll go amazing. So definitely always been a big fan, uh, not always, I I wasn't the biggest fan of it when I first saw it, but I do love Batman Begins, like, it gave us Batman that was gritty, it uh, has gr not really great action, the action is pretty bad in this, and if we're being just honest on action alone, the action in the entire trilogy is pretty, isn't very well choreographed at all, so, including the Dark Knight and Dark Knight Rises, the action isn't good, it is not, except for like the vehicle Except for the vehicle stuff, like the hand to hand combat fights are pretty bad. But, um, it has by far the best Rachel Dawes we have. Like, the one in The Dark Knight is, uh, what is her name? Maggie Gyllenhaal is one of the worst recastings I've ever seen in my life. Man, but, uh, it, this is definitely a great film. So, I want to go Masterpiece. I do. It's just, I don't know what it is. Over time, it could go up there, but for now, we'll put it in Amazing. Now we have, uh, I was going to say following, that's next. Uh, now we have Dunkirk, Christopher Nolan's attempt on a war film. And a lot of people, it's one of those divisive ones. It's debatably, pro yeah, it's probably his most visually stunning film. It's a visually, it is gorgeous. Like, it is a beautiful film, but I will go probably in, for me, I'm going to go, I, I do really like this one, so I'll go good. I won't go great just at the moment. I, war is one, not one of my favorite subgenres. Like, I have my favorites. Like, I, I love Saving Private Ryan, but I'm very inexperienced in that genre. Like, things like action movies, horror, western, sci-fi, those, like, those are more for me, but... War just is a bit more touchy for me because it always deals with a lot of subject matter I'm not really the biggest fan of because of how gruesome it can get. This one is PG-13, so it doesn't go that far, but it, it feels like it, it does drag at certain... It does drag a bit, so... It's one of his shorter films, so I do thank you for that, especially when so many films are bloating their runtime beyond belief. Okay, but it's... It's a really good film, and it's told by, like, three perspectives, and it does this really cool thing where each time the events of one perspective end, it picks up with the next perspective, and then as soon as that one ends, the third perspective comes in to look. So, it's a really fascinating film, and I do really enjoy it. I enjoy most of the films on this list, but... It's definitely one that I can see my I can rewatch and have a good enough time with it. I can I can have a, a good enough time with any of these pretty much, but a, a good enough. I'll use that term carefully. Now we have following of all the films on this list, this is the worst one of of if we're just being objective, it is definitely its worst film no one has ever made, but I will go 
okay on this. Um, so, here's the thing. So, I do, I think this one's okay. I can handle it. It's just, it's a fascinating one because not many directors have their star like this because this is kind of like a student film because Nolan was just doing this like in his free time with uh, the people that he had at the, that were available, like his friends with uh, stuff that he could borrow with like a bunch of, I think it was like $10,000. So it's in black and white because it was cheaper to do it, it that way. But it's a fascinating one, which is probably one of the reasons why it's above. Uh, it's not my least favorite one that he's ever done, but it's definitely, if we're being objective, just purely objective in filmmaking alone, this is easily his worst film. But it's still, it's still a solid film. It's not the worst film I've ever seen in my life. And now we have probably, okay, no. We have one of Nolan's most underrated films, uh, and that is Insomnia. And I'm going to shock a lot of people. I am going to go in great. I really enjoy Insomnia. So I think a lot of people, most people, I don't know. It's I keep saying I don't know. Most people... They don't really give this one a chance because it was more of the early type Nolan, and aside from a memento, early type Nolan is kind of frowned upon in a lot of regards. So, like, his, like, first three people are not the biggest fans of, besides memento, that one has a good following. But, uh, I really enjoyed this one. Sorry about the little cut there, but anyway, back to what I was saying. Uh, Robin Williams is a great villain in this. Al Pacino gives a, probably my favorite performance he's ever given. He's not that good in The Godfather, guys. He isn't. He The Godfather's not even a very good film. It's okay, but it's not good. I mean, I mean, I mean it's good, but it's not a greatest of all time. It's not top 100. Definitely not that, but um, we're talking about Insomnia. Insomnia is, it's a fascinating one as well because it's the only film where Nolan did not write this one, so when you look at it, it's, it feels the least Nolan of all of them because, like, even things like Following and Batman Begins and probably not Dunkirk. Oh, I mean, in certain regards, Dunkirk, but they're all, like, they're told out of order, so they go from different perspectives, like, uh, sp like Batman Begins being one of the main standouts, but that one is very much, they keep lending and going back to different perspectives, like Bruce Wayne and his past, and then it jumps, like, 30 years into the future and then back to his past to like explore and it really is fascinating in that regard so that is a it's not doesn't really do that so it's a odd one but it's definitely a really good one when people say this is like bottom three no one i'm like have you seen well we'll get to that but um now we have the prestige and i'm gonna shock a lot of people as well i adore the prestige so i am going to go at the top of masterpiece this is my favorite nolan film pretty easily now the dark knight used to be the dark knight i will now say is overrated like I, as much as i love it the amount of love that that film gets um and the amount of people that shrug off saying it's perfect and do not acknowledge the flaws are downright infuriating but it's a the prestige is a fantastic film like the the twist, mind blowing. Like the, I mean, a lot of people like to say Memento's twist is better. Memento's twist, I, I, I predicted that twist. So that twist was not was not very well done because I could predict that one. The Prestige, I genuinely had my mind blown and was just. I sp I and I rewatched it a few days ago and I actually learned more this time around and got a new perspective of the twist in this rewatch so it keeps giving you new perspectives in the rewatch so it makes you think differently it has a great performance by bale this is definitely for me bale's best performance that i've seen out of him i have not seen american psycho at least not yet and hugh jackman is great in this one as well uh uh this is my favorite film from both of them so i adore it it's one of my favorite films and it's a just a really good film. It's probably my, my I would say it's probably his most underrated film because a lot of people like to say it's one of his worst. I mean a lot of people respect it but say it's one of his worst. This is in no way one of his worst. It is a great film and also has 
this is gonna be very random, but also it ha is in like a time period that I really like based on like what they wore, like what they used, and all that stuff. So it's really good. And a lot of people like to go and jump on the train for no reason that it's un that the characters are unlikable. Yeah, but unlike The Godfather and Goodfellas, where you're just suffering miserably through the runtime because of how unlikable these characters are, it gives you it makes you want to go further because you're actually wanting to see what's going to happen. Plus, they're played by much more capable actors. Yeah, so I do love The Prestige. And now we have Interstellar. This, uh, I re I actually, no, not rewatched. I watched for the first time not that long ago, so my thoughts are pretty fresh. So Interstellar is going to go in the top of great. And the ending for me is very mixed. I like it, but at the same time, I don't love it. I don't love the ending. I feel like they should have, they probably should have found a better way, like, Maybe cover your ears if you haven't seen this one, or just skip ahead, but they, where they go in the, into, like, the third dimension type thing, the that, eh, that confused me just a little bit, so I didn't like that element, too. I mean, no, I didn't like it. It's I liked it enough, but I do think that they should have found a better way to end it, but the perf when people like to say Nolan is an emotionless director, watch Interstellar. That has some heartbreaking scenes, like like that scene where Matthew McConaughey is like just driving away from his kids, and that's a very emotional scene. Like, there's a lot of emotional scenes in here, and like the score is freaking phenomenal. Like, it is a perfect score, and I I love elements to this. I adore some of these things, but I do think it is too long. It should not be nearly three hours. It should have been cut down, definitely. Like, like, no one's not like Tarantino, where he has to get away, where he has to, like, just get away with every single one, and that's one of my flaws with Tarantino. He, not all of his films need to be that long, but, whew, but, I do love Interstellar, so, uh, uh, yeah, Insomnia and Up, I love these films, so I'm just gonna go out on the limb and say that. Deal with it, guys. Wait, yeah, yeah, okay, so, and now we have Tenet, and here is my hot take. Tenet goes in meh. I am really not a big fan of Tenet. I can watch it and tolerate it, but it is long as heck for no good reason. Like, it is so unbelievably long and boring. It is confusing as all heck. I I'm I feel ashamed to say this. I do not know the main character's name. I don't know the plot at all. It is that confusing. I don't even know if the creators know what the plot is. The plot is just so unexplored. It's just what is this film? It is so long and just I mean, again, it's not a dumpster fire like some of these directors have. Like with, uh, for example, like when you have uh, what's his face, uh, David Fincher with a, uh, where he had Alien Three. That's a dumpster fire, but it's not the worst thing I've ever seen. But at the same time, if I'm gonna watch a Nolan film, that is not one I'm. I'm just like I'm clamoring to rewatch. It's not. It's probably the last one I'm gonna pick up because it's the longest. I believe it's. It's certainly in competition with that in Interstellar. It's it destroys Interstellar in the realm of that. It feels long, like it really has horrible pacing. So, eh, I it's fine. I mean, like I said, it's 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 okay. It's like a two and a half out of five. It's I can tolerate it, but it's just not really a film for me. Okay, no, actually, because there's actually some people that will agree with me on this uh, for Tenet. This is my biggest hot take. Memento, I'm going to go in... Memento we have, so I'm going to have to go in... Uh, no. no. Uh, I'll go back of good. A lot of people like say that this is like a top three Nolan film. For me, a lot of people say that the twist was like mind-blowing. I personally was able to predict a twist. I don't know how. It's just the, it was. it seemed obvious. It's one of... I think two times I predicted a twist, it was that, and I predicted the killer reveal in Spiral, which is not a good thing, because that one was so blatantly obvious, it sh more people should have been able to predict that, but, 
Memento, it's one that never really connected with me. It's not really a film targeted for me, but it's, I mean, it's, it's a good one. It's just, again, like Tenet, if I'm going to go with a Nolan film, I would go with The Prestige or a few more we're going to talk about soon. So it's just not really a film for me. It's very, it's, again, it's just as confusing as Tenet. Uh, I mean, yeah, it's just as confusing as Tenet. It just, the payoff is miles better. Like, the Tenet fumbles it hard with the, uh, or like, the finale and stuff. Like, Memento really does have a pretty satisfying, like, it has a very satisfying thing at the end. It's just, I'm not the biggest fan of, uh, the first, the first two acts. It's like, the third act is pretty decent, but it also, it's a unique one because it's, like, told backwards. So, you then get an event, and then you are... How do I say this? It's like, since it's told backwards, like, you would get an event, then you would go, like, almost, then you would, like, cut, and then you would get the beginning of that event, and then you would get the ending of the event again, so, and then it repeats this, and it then, like, become, I actually was getting my mind blown at that part, it's just, uh, the twist, personally, like I said, was not a, was not a, it was a pretty obvious one for me, so I predicted that. Now we have The Dark Knight. Of all the films on this list, this is probably no one's most overrated film, yet it's still a masterpiece. So I'm going to go at the back of Masterpiece. I love I do I do really enjoy this film. It's not a it's not a perfect film. It is not uh, at all, but it is definitely a really really good one. So I love a lot of things about this like of course, Heath Ledger's Joker is fantastic, but a lot of people like to say that it's a 5 out of 5, yet I've met many people that say that they have as their favorite film just because of Heath Ledger's Joker. You cannot put this film as, like, your favorite film of all time just because of a performance by one guy when there's, like, there's films like The Shawshank Redemption, there's films like, um... I'm trying to look. There's yeah, and the prestige where like everyone's giving it their all. Meanwhile, it's Heath Ledger that is destroying the show here, as well as the fact that it it does not it of all the films on it's one of the ones in the entire Batman franchise. If that feels the least like a Batman film, if you just retitled this like a um okay, I can't think of a title. If you just made this. Uh, not a Batman film, just had this as, like, um, this police officer or someone that's, a that just doesn't want to kill people for, like, whatever reason, and it's just this criminal that's testing him for all, for whatever reason, because that does happen in real life, there's no way that doesn't, but if you just did that, it could kind of be a remake of Heat, and even Film Kid, who has seen Heat, has told me they're very much alike The Dark Knight and Heat. There's a reason why no one has gone on record to say that he took a lot of inspiration from Heat, so it, it doesn't feel like a Batman film, and it has nothing distinct, and that's the problem with The Dark Knight and The Dark Knight Rise. Uh, not, no, Rise has some stuff, but... Uh, it also suffers probably the most in this trilogy where it doesn't even feel like a Batman film and just being Batman-centric. Batman Begins is very much about Batman, and if you look online, nobody talks about Batman and The Dark Knight. It's always Heath Ledger's performance as the Joker, or Tom Hardy's Bane in, in Rises. But Batman's always basically the side character in this because he's outnumbered. It's like he's always the side character in this trilogy, except for in this first one, because no, uh, all the respect in the world to Bale, he's awesome, but he is very underutilized in certain regards in The Dark Knight. Like he's barely, like he is such a side character compared to Heath Ledger, who outshines him so much, which is a good thing because he's so phenomenal. Ledger is, but. At the same time, it also makes you feel, but it also makes you feel like that also means that we're not getting much Batman in here. So, as a Batman film, it can be a very offensive film to this franchise. As just a film in general, it's a great one. Oh, don't get me wrong. And now we have Nolan's newest film, Oppenheimer. So, um, it's been a very a bit of a divisive one for some reasons, but I'm gonna go. Ugh. Oh, uh, do I? Um, I'm trying to think. What should I do? I w it's it's close between this and begins. I'm. Should I go? Um. 
because it's a very, very close call between this and begins, so... Yeah, I think right now I will etch this out of... Be I think I will etch this above begins barely. It's a razor, 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 razor thin etch uh, between them. But Oppenheimer, it's one of the slower films um, in Nolan's run. It's, uh, oh, no, correct me. This is his longest film. This is over three hours, so... But I didn't really feel the runtime as much as, like, I felt the runtime with, like, Tenet and Interstellar. But this one, it flies by more. It has a... Ma it is, has a great ending where in the final moments, I'm going to say what they say. It's not really a spoiler, but... Te okay, technically it is. Maybe just mute. Skip, skip, maybe the rest of this because I also want to talk about some stuff here, but... They're in like in the final moments where uh, Oppenheimer is talking to Albert Einstein. He says, uh, remember when I came to you with those calculations and we thought we might start a chain reaction that would destroy the entire world? And then he says, I believe we did. Like, I was able to predict that he was going to say, I believe we did. As soon as he said like the part about the uh, start a chain reaction that would destroy the entire world, it's because... They've been, everyone is just arguing and stuff the entire film, like, it's destroying everyone, and, like, it's just a ma it's just a brilliant film in some of the stuff that it does. The score is phenomenal! The score is wonderful! Like, that is a amazing, amazing score. Like, I have not seen a score that good since probably Inception for Nolan. Like, it's, uh, Inception or Interstellar's, um, it's, it hasn't been good since that, but... The score is fantastic, and I love the way that they use it in, like, the final moments, but it is haunting as well. It also makes you, as soon as you watch it, it makes you feel less safe. Like, the as soon as I got done, I was like, so there are people out there that could seriously do this to us, and it's just, we wouldn't know it. And it is a terrifying film in certain regards, and I respect it for that. So, it is another, in terms of just... Nolan directing his, uh, just people and, like, acting performances alone, this might be his best film. Like, it, all the acting performances in here are fantastic. Like, there's not a weak link in this entire bunch. Like, Emily, Emily Blunt, I'm not the biggest fan of her character because of just the way that they, uh, the way that she is, but that's more the, that's kind of how she's written to be in, like, this, where in some scenes, like, she doesn't, it looks like she doesn't care about Oppenheimer, others, like, apparently... He means the world to her and like the way that they, the way that she is around her baby. So it can get uncomfortable in times in that regard, but a fantastic film. It's border, borderline a masterpiece. So it's just right now, it's going to be a razor thrin, thrin, huh? Just invented a new word there. Copyright ledger forever. Yeah. But anyway, it's borderline a masterpiece. So it's just going to stay right below there. And now we have our last two, and one of them is Inception, and let's waste no time with this. And Inception goes at, in the middle of Masterpiece. I prefer The Prestige. Uh, for me, personally, it's just, The Prestige is kind of more me. Actually, no, it really isn't. The Inception, I should like more. I have no idea why I love The Prestige so much. It's just, um, knowing you are a mastermind, let's just say that. But Inception... Uh, I was not really expecting as much from, I don't know why people were gonna, people were just telling me, like, you're gonna love this dude, and I was just like, yeah, it'll probably be, it'll probably be decent, but probably not the best thing I've ever seen, and my mind, like, that, that probably helped it a lot, because my mind was freaking blown, like, wow, like, this film is phenomenal, like, the score is great, Leo is fantastic in this, and it's, it also, it kind of, it's basically Tenet, but it's, it's more in the realm of, Tenet, one of its biggest flaws is that it's so unbearably confusing, and it's not to tell a story, it's confusing just for the sake of confusing. This is not nearly as confusing. This takes a very, it's like the Matrix. It takes a very complex, very complex plot and explains it very simply. It doesn't try and overstay its welcome, <laughs> like the Matrix sequels do. It doesn't try and overcomplicate this this entire plot line again like the Matrix sequels do. Oh man, that was a pretty bad franchise overall, even if the first one's fantastic. But uh, 
yeah, sorry, got sidetracked. But uh, this takes a very complex pre uh, premise and actually explains it in a very smart way and does it very... How do I say this? It does it very... I'm trying to... Th it, it does it and it doesn't treat the audience like morons. It takes this premise and just does it simply fantastic. So I enjoyed that about it. And of course, like the action's great. Like that scene where they have that, uh, the, the, the room thing where, and it's practical effects. So like they weren't just like CGIing the heck out of this thing. They actually had J Joseph Gordon-Levitt uh, in a room and they were just spinning it around. And it is fantastic the way that they do it. Like my mind is blown watching this and i loved it and i need to rewatch it soon so definitely a film that you guys need to check out because it's fan it's phenomenal and now we have the last one on here and uh, probably one of nolan's most controversial that's the dark knight rises and it breaks my heart because there's elements of this i love like the emotion in here is great like, certain scenes, like, that scene within, like, where Alfred just, like, is spilling his guts about, uh, when he's talking to Bruce, and it's a fantastic scene, and that scene at the end where he's just like, I'm sorry, and that he didn't want this to happen, and, and how he has no one left now, all that is fantastic, the emotion here is great, Tom Hardy's the villain is great, but at the same time, the action in here is not even the it has some of the worst hand-to-hand -hand combat fights in this entire trilogy like and plus the logic in this film is awful like it has some of the worst logic i've ever seen like where there have where in a lot of plot holes where somehow bruce wayne is able to get from uh bruce wayne is somehow able to get from this pit where there's nothing around and it, it, for miles, and he somehow manages to get back to Gotham, which is like halfway across the world in like a matter of hours. It would take him at least, I don't, I don't know. I'm not a pilot, but it would take him at least, at least a day to get back. So that alone is one. You have the part about somehow he, uh, some magic knee brace can fix the cartilage in his bone, which is just so moronic. Like who thought of this? And it's the most, of all the films on this list, it's, it's the most sloppily written because it has some very lazy execution. So, and, uh, what are the bigger examples? Like, uh, a, a one that's very random, but that I picked up on rewatch, like the fact that when Bruce went, um, uh, when they have that scene where they light the fire and with the flare and it makes the bat signal on there and it's like, Wow, that looks so cool. And then the objective critic in you starts to say, like, hey, did he just spend, like, half of his day doing that just to make that one cool scene when he could have just been trying to help people and also maybe not get himself nearly killed trying to get the bomb out of Gotham because he had to make that little show off? Oh, it's just initial things like that that are just so lazy and just so sloppily written that I do not like at all. And... And I'm trying to think, there's one more that is, that really is infuriating, but, um, uh, it's on the tip of my tongue. And, oh yeah, and there's one involving somehow Bane, uh, like, breaking Batman's back, which is, of course, he is the villain that broke the bat, he is the only villain that has been able to do that, and, so, there's that, but it also means that, somehow, Bruce Wayne breaks his back, and then, how does he get it fixed? Ladies and gentlemen, all you have to do if you want to fix Bruce Wayne's back apparently is then start punching him and beating him up with it and then letting him ha in in his back and then let him hang for like, I don't know, probably around a few hours. So I don't know about you guys because me personally, I've never broken my bra no, my brack, my back and I do not plan on doing that. So I've never done that and... <laughs> I don't know how that happens, but I mean, I don't know if that's possible, but I doubt it is, especially considering no one else believes that, and I don't believe it for a second, so never, ever, 
I, I from the m moment I watched it for the first time, it's always been my least favorite of the trilogy. So it is definitely the most sloppily written, and so for that reason, I am heartbroken. That I have to do this. I want, but for the scenes alone that are good. Because the scenes, when they're good, are great, so I'll go top of good. But there's a part of me that wants it so much higher. And maybe on a few rewatches and just like, okay, dude, we get your objective. We appreciate the thought. But please take this film on its own terms and give it a higher score. Maybe if my head gets inside of me enough, that could happen. But for now, it is sadly going to be in good. But who knows, whenever Nolan makes his newest film, which I am desperately hoping is a Bond film because he said that he wants to do it, I really hope that this film can improve. But it is also, oh yeah, it's also one of his longest films. It's like nearly three hours as well. Wow, Nolan actually does have a few films that are pretty long. The Dark Knight's also like two and a half hours, so he actually does have some long films. So I will... I will try. I'm going to try and give this a re uh, a second chance or third or whatever. I've given it many chances. So I'm desperately hoping that I can be won over. Just take the objective criti uh, critic out of me, which is going to be very hard to do because I've tried many times. But anyway, guys, that is my tier list of the Nolan films. But don't let me just be talking. Put your ranking in the comments. Put your tier where, where you would put them on their tiers, whatever. Put a ranking tier thing. I would love to hear it, and I will try and get these content things a bit more going. But anyway, thank you all so much for watching. Please like and subscribe. It always helps out around here. And have a good one.